Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Last week was bad. Last week was a bad week. I'm like to you. It was a it was a very chaste. And I mean, to be fair, we were playing with a massive handicap, I think a 12-point handicap following like a whole host of transfers. Um, so yeah, it wasn't great. And then obviously some of our players let us down in the match. But we made a couple of key um, additions. I think having Onana on the side is crucial moving forward. Um, and then also clearing off, you know, some of the the underperformers, I'd say. Um, but some players did let us down, to be honest. Um, but there's hope on the horizon, right? Nottingham Forest should be better than they were against Arsenal. Newcastle, um, I didn't expect them to, to lose to West Ham, if I'm being honest. So that might be something we need to start looking at. Um, and then obviously with Salah, of you, honestly, Salah was the only shining light in our in in starting 11. Dwight McNeil wasn't great either against, you know, Southampton, um, against Brentford, against West Ham. So it's going to be interesting to see how we're able to shake this up. But ladies and gentlemen, before we get way into it, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be looking at some Fantasy Premier League transfers you should make, or possibly I should make ahead of game week 13. Um, some team strategies and suggestions. Why should you listen to me? Because I'm languishing we are at the bottom. I guess this is like an average man's um, FPL journey. Um, I guess just follow along and see if you can pick up a thing or two either from my victories and or my mistakes, right? So without further ado, let's get into the transfers. I'd say honestly on the keeper front, we are more than fine. Um, Sals and Onana, I think are good enough. Um, anybody else is pretty much... I mean, the, the week I sold Raya, he goes on to have an absolute blinder, which is crazy, right? Um, so kind of like a bit of a, of a kick in the guts. Um, so for keepers, honestly, I'd say like those are your good, your best bets. Raya is making a bit of a a comeback. I think they have a couple of um, good matches. <clears throat> Sorry. The West Ham match is going to be good for them. I think the Fulham match will be good for them. And then maybe United, they can keep a clean sheet. So as well. So consider Raya if you're in the market for a goalkeeper, in my opinion. Defense is where things have to change now for us because I think Rico Lewis... Um, City's time is up for the time being. Rico Lewis and Haaland are off. I mean, we'll, pick, we'll, we'll get back to Haaland in a bit. But for, from that sense, I think, <clears throat> sorry, Rico Lewis is definitely one that we're going to have to let go of, despite him being a cheap beast. Um, and then we'll look at actually like bringing in somebody. Pedro Poro was another one that I probably had in my team very early on in the season, but... Um, he let us down big time um, up until last weekend where he had an absolute brand, um, I said blinder. Blinder. How many how many United players can we have, right? So I think Masrawi is also a good shout <clears throat> ahead of Diogo Dalo. Because Masrawi has had has played Masrawi has played a couple of really good games. Um why do we only have one free transfer? I uh, know we have, we have, okay. All right. Majrawi has played a couple of good games. Um, and so maybe having him, him in ahead of Dalo might be the way to go. Um, Dalo has had a good, look, and honestly, I think I'll keep Dalo for one more week to see how it goes. Because honestly, Dalo had like, literally he's had like one-on-one -on -one chances and empty posts and he skied them, right? Which would have been like massive for a defender. Um, whereas, you know, Masrawi has been consistently getting assists um, here and there and stuff like that. I mean, one of the matches that they had a clean sheet, he was hooked off around like the 50th minute and only got a point as opposed to the six he would have gotten for the clean sheet. It was absolutely crazy. So we'll keep it on for one more week. I'm thinking of maybe looking at a, a Robinson. Robinson coming up against um, a team like Spurs in, on the assist bracket. He should, you know, be able to um, come up with a few goals. Liverpool against City might be... Um, this might be the big to steer clear of them. I'm looking at Arsenal as well, right? Because the West Ham match, they should be, they should be, a, they should be good. Um, kind of surprised though to see does Julian Timber start for Arsenal? I don't know. He does start. He started in the last four games, um, so maybe he should be. I mean, an Arsenal defender might be the way to go. Gabriel had a knock. Was there a knock in the in the Champions League midweek? I'm not too sure, but if not, he might be a good shout to have um, in the team. You know what? Let's just keep Rico Lewis in for one more week, right? We really can't afford. I don't think we can afford any any massive changes um, in that sense, and I don't think there's anybody like that screaming out as that out at us for us to get. Um, we we'll look at the midfield now. 
I think Ena is good. Ena is good. Hall should have gotten good points against um, West Ham. Should get good points against Crystal Palace. Um, hopefully. But other than that, really, I'm looking to the, the, defend, the defensive line. Gvardiol, he pops in with assists and goals for City, but can't keep a clean sheet to save his life. Pedro Poro is really hit and miss. Virgil, honestly, for the Liverpool clean sheets, but they're coming up against Man City and who knows how well they're going to perform. So, um, and honestly, it's, it's a toss-up between Dalu and Masrawi. Literally, they are level on points. Uh, Masrawi, uh, Dalu is more expensive, but I mean, this could be his week, right? And then Aston Villa coming up against Chelsea. Yeah, so... Honestly, in the, in the defensive line, I'm not too sure we make any big changes just yet. Now let's look at the midfield, right? Bruno Fernandes was supposed to be like a, a real Hail Mary pick against the um, Ipswich. Didn't go his way. But I think there's good still to come from him. Like he got us a, a couple of very good performances in the last two games. Like 17 points, 10 points. Looked to be back to his best. And maybe against Everton, he might be that guy um let's let's keep it up and see you know i think a united player just because we don't necessarily right now know how where um amorim's team is going to land who's going to start you know garnacho whether it's garnacho whether it's um whether it's yeah what's his face uh, mount starting in the midfield role in Buemo is one person i want to bring in and i think if i take out somebody like dwight mcneil or Winks. Winks has literally just always been injured. And I take out someone like Haaland, I should be able to afford to bring in um, some of these players. Brentford are playing Leicester, Aston Villa, Newcastle. So Brian Mbwemo is certainly somebody that I want to bring into the team. Um, maybe we keep McNeil as like a bench option right now. Uh, Brian Mbwemo is at 7.9. And then the other options like Luis Diaz who could come in and do a job, right? The, there are options like Madison who had a blinder last weekend, but he's really inconsistent if you look at like his uh, his performances, right? 16 points last week, perfect. But then he went on around like one, six, two, four, ten, three. Yeah, you really don't know where I'm going to stand with him. And um, up against Fulham, we've seen them capitulate sometimes against teams they are expected to beat. So... Worth a shout, 7.7 .7 is not too bad, but I think Brian Mbuemo is possibly a much better shout. He's had a couple of quieter game weeks, um, three points here, five points here, three points here. So we are looking at like, you know, contributions along these lines of like a 15 pointer, a 14 pointer and stuff like that. So Brian Mbuemo is somebody that I'll look to, to bring into my side. Um, and then maybe you're looking at like maybe a Saka against West Ham, you know? Because West Ham is certainly going to be um, a much easier side to to go up against than um, than some of his previous opponents, right? And and look, he were recorded 13 points against New um, Nottingham Forest. He can easily do that against um, West Ham. So Bukayo Saka might be somebody to bring into um, your starting lineup. You know, maybe I should consider that. Maybe I will go for Bukayo Saka. I feel like let's have faith in Arsenal because they also played an absolute blinder um, midweek two against um, Sporting CP 5-0. Very good performance. So I think Saka might be the way to go. I'm, I really do want to bring in Mbwemo as well. Let's see how the Haaland chips fall. Haaland is out. Like <laughs> he can honestly bag a hat-trick next week, but Haaland is out because for 15 mil, I can't afford, you know, a Haneha. Like that means like, you know, some game makes he performs and some he doesn't. Raul Jimenez, I expected more from him last week, you know. Um, he's had a couple of quiet game weeks after like a real good showing, consistent good showing. Um, but I'm expecting him to get back to 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 some amount of consistency and form. Um, against Tottenham Hotspur, you know how they play the high line. Like he could really get in with a goal here or there. I'm willing to keep the faith in him. But one striker, I do, I do want to get in. A mistake I made was not bringing in Cunha last week. It was honestly a toss-up between Cunha and Raul um, Jimenez and I picked Raul Jimenez because it was cheaper and Cunha went and grabbed. How many goals did he get last week? 16. And I should have known that because the weekend before, he got 12 points against Southampton and he, he was in my team and I moved him out. It was a big mistake. So similar to uh, Dominic Solanke, let's hope he doesn't come to bite us in the, in the ass again. Um, but honestly, you can look at players, players like um, Wood, who's coming up against Ipswich, could get, you know, 
um, some good, you know, amount of points. I, look at this against Arsenal. I don't think he started. Did he start? No, he came on off the bench, which is weird to me. Welbeck also is an interesting one to keep an eye out on, right? Coming up against Southampton, Welbeck could bag a fair few goals. He's had a quiet couple of game weeks. And so he could be, you know, primed for a resurgence. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Wissa, obviously. Watkins against Chelsea. You could potentially see him striking the Isak. Also a possibility. He had a quiet game week against Newcastle, which, eh, against West Ham, which was very strange considering the quality that he has. And um, maybe he should be able to bounce back to it anyways. And Solanke against Fulham. Solanke is weird, man, because honestly, he can be so good with a 16-point haul against Aston Villa. And then we bring him in the next week and he only has two points against Ipswich, you know? Crazy. So yeah, anyways. Um, couple of changes I've made to the side. Honestly, we we pray for the best. I know that's... <laughs> That's not what you want to hear from your, I won't say resident expert, but somebody who you are looking at for like quote unquote tips. But it is what it is, right? Um, it is what it is, man. I'm thinking about bringing in cells for Onana, but I don't think Everton are going to have like a good time against United. So maybe I'll keep cells on the bench. Um, Twanzebi ahead of Stewart, because Stewart is like out. Stewart is just making up the num numbers at this point. He's injured. For like a really long time, so could be a while before we see him back. Anyways, guys, these are the picks. Um, I'm not going to captain Salah. I think I'm going to keep the faith with Palmer that he comes good in this match. He hasn't scored in a fair few matches, so I think actually no, maybe Saka should be our captain for this game week. Maybe Saka, you know, because Palmer has been a bit of a, a fraud recently. Um, but knowing Palmer, he might actually come in and prove us wrong. So, guys. Those are the picks. Please let me know what you think of them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions as well for the team, we went, we had a massive drop. I think we're in the top 10 in our league and then we had a massive drop last weekend. So kind of a bad one, but let me know if you have any suggestions, comments, please let me know down there in the comment section. And if you enjoyed today's video, guys, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel for even more weekly FPL content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.